Our today's topic is diuretics. Diuretics are usually used to increase the urine excretion. They act by inhibiting tubular reabsorption. These are mostly used to manage hypertension and edema. Diuretics are classified into three categories based upon their efficacy. High efficacy diuretics, medium efficacy diuretics and weak diuretics. High efficacy diuretics inhibit the co-transport of sodium, potassium and chloride. They act by inhibiting the reabsorption of sodium and water. Medium efficacy diuretics also act by inhibiting the reabsorption of sodium and water but they act by inhibiting the sodium chloride symptoms. Whereas weak diuretics are classified under three categories that is carbonic and hydrous inhibitors, potassium sparing diuretics and osmotic diuretics. Starting with the first category, high ceiling that is loop diuretics or high efficacy diuretics. The major example the most commonly used drug under this category is furosemide. Furosemide is a prototype drug and its onset of action varies based on their route of administration. Like for IV administration, the onset is 2 to 5 minutes. For intramuscular, it's 10 to 20 minutes. For oral, it's 20 to 40 minutes. The duration of action is 3 to 6 hours and the major site of action is thick ascending loop of Hanley. On thick ascending loop of Hanley, furosemide inhibits the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter and hence inhibits the reabsorption of sodium and water. So this is the site of action where the furosemide acts. This furosemide is inhibiting the reabsorption of sodium chloride and potassium back into the blood. In usual condition, sodium and chloride are reabsorbed into the bloodstream through the cells, through the luminal cells. This furosemide is inhibiting this co-transporter and hence it is inhibiting the reabsorption of sodium and chloride into the bloodstream. This is the action that is after 5 minutes of IV injection, furosemide increases the rate of renal blood flow. It the GRF that is G GFR that is glomerular filtration rate remains unaltered with the furosemide drug. It relieves LVF as well as pulmonary edema and magnitude of hyperuricemia is lower and it is not much absorbed as compared to thi thiazides. It is also beneficial as there is little raise in blood glucose with this kind of drug. The other actions which furosemides have is increasing the excretion of calcium and magnesium and decreasing the excretion of uric acid. Hence, it can also cause formation of gout issue in the patient's body. The usual dose is 20 to 80 mg once daily in the morning. For renal insufficient patients, the dose can be up to 200 mg 6 hourly by IV or IM route. In pulmonary edema, it is 40 to 80 mg when given intravenously. These are the pharmacokinetic parameters of furosemide, that is, furosemide is rapid uh, absorbed when given orally, bioavailability is 60%, they have low lipid solubility and they are highly bound to plasma proteins, partially conjugated with glucuronic acid and these are mainly excreted in the unchanged form through glomerular filtration and tubular secretion. Also it is excreted through bile and directly through the intestine. The plasma T half is 1 to 2 hours for this drug. Next drug in the same category of sealing diuretics or loop diuretics is bumetanide. They are similar to furosemide in case of site of action and sealing effect as well as duration of action. But they are 40 times more potent than furosemide. It induces rapid diuresis and highly effective in pulmonary edema. This drug may act in cases where furosemide fails. So this can be a choice of drug when the furosemide is not acting properly in the patient's body. Bumetanide may be tolerated by patients allergic to furosemide and may cause myopathy. Pharmacokinetic parameters for bumetanide is Bumetanide is more, more lipid soluble, bioavailability is much higher that is 80 to 100%. Therefore, this is the preferred drug 
for oral use in congestive heart failure patients. Vimitinite is highly bound to plasma protein and partly metabolized and excreted unchanged in urine and the plasma T half is 60 minutes. The dose of vimitinite is 1 to 5 mg orally once a day in the morning, 2 to, 5, 2 to 4 mg when given intramuscularly or through IV route and maximum dose can be 15 mg per day in the renal failure patients. Third drug in the same category of Luke diuretics is tyrosamide. Tyrosamide is similar to furosemide and it is three times more potent than furosemide. Oral absorption of this drug is more rapid and it is more complete as compared to furosemide. Elimination T half is 3.5 hours and duration of action is 4 to 8 hours. This can be used in case of edema as well as hypertension. The dose is to 2.5 to 5 mg orally, 2 to 20 mg per day in edema, whereas up to 100 mg BD, that is twice a day, in renal failure patients. Now combining the uses of diuretics, diuretic, loop diuretics. Loop diuretics are used in edema in the patients suffering from cardiac, hepatic or renal issues. Preferred in the patients with congestive heart failure for rapid mobilization of edema fluid. It is also used in chronic renal failure. Massive doses are needed in such cases, but they are effective. And it may decrease the need of dialysis in the patient suffering from high or severe edema. Loop diuretics are also used in acute pulmonary edema because it produces prompt relief and it can also be used in cerebral edema, hypertension, anemia and hypercalcemia of malignancies. Now next coming to the second category that is the medium efficacy diuretics. They are thiazide and related diuretics. These are the drugs which are used as thiazide diuretics. With, along with their trade names and daily doses as well as the duration of action. These are medium efficacy diuretics and the response increases with dose that is up to 10 liter of urine can be produced per day. Active even in case of renal failure cases. So these are the drugs, thiazides are the drugs which can be used in the patients which are suffering from renal insufficiency. Here the major site of action is thick ascending loop of Hanley and late distal tubule. At these sites, thiazides act by inhibiting sodium chloride symporter at the luminal membrane. By acting on these symporters, they inhibit the reabsorption of water and sodium into the bloodstream. This is a diagram very similar to the case where we see uh, where we have seen in uh, furosemide case. This is the sodium chloride symporter. This symporter is responsible for the reabsorption of sodium and chloride into from the uh, lumen into the bloodstream. These thiazides will bind to this sodium chloride symporter and they will inhibit the sodium chloride symporter. Therefore, they will inhibit the reabsorption of sodium as well as chloride and hence eventually they inhibit the reabsorption of water into the blood. They have flat dose response curve and they do not cause any significant acid base balance alterations. The main action of thiazides is it reduces blood volume as it decreases the reabsorption of sodium chloride as well as water, hence it decreases the blood volume. It reduces the glomerular filtration rate, it decreases the renal calcium excretion and increases renal magnesium excretion, which is opposite to furosemide. They have greater reduction in urate excretion than furosemide. Therefore, they are more. See, uh, they are more. Uh, uh, the patients at gout will be at a more risk to have thiazides as compared to furosemide. They also develop. Uh, they also sh slow developing fall in the blood pressure in hypertensive patients and elevation of blood glu blood glucose in some of the patients. These are the pharmacokinetic parameters of thiazides. They are well absorbed orally. No injectable preparations are available for thiazides. They are given only through oral route. Onset of action is 1 hour. Duration of action is 6 to 48 hours. That is quite a range. High lipid solubility 
large volume of distribution, low rates of renal clearance, long-acting nittle hepatic metabolism excreted as such in the urine that is unchanged. The, it is filtered at glomerulus and secreted at proximal tubule. Tubular reabsorption depends on lipid solubility and elimination half-life ha or T-half is 3 to 6 hours. These are the examples of the drug category that is uh, chlorothalidone, metolazone, zimepamide and indapamide. Coming to the uses of thiazides in related diuretics, they are used in edema in mild to moderate cases, considered for maintenance therapy, at best in cardiac edema but less effective in hepatic and renal edema. It, has, it is powerless in the presence of renal failure but, uh, and hence they cannot be used in, the, in such patients. Secondly, it is used in hypertension, one of the first line of drug in the hypertensive patients. It is also used in diabetes insipidus hypercalciuria. Now these are some of the complications of loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics therapy. So the complications of loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics include hypokalemia because it increases the excretion of uh, potassium along with NaCl and water. Another complication is acute saline depletion. Hyponatremia can occur. Gastrointestinal tract and central nervous system disorders can, disturbances can occur like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, giddiness, weakness, impotency, tingling or picking, pricking sensation, hearing loss, allergic manifestations, hyperuricemia, hyperglycemia and hyperlipidemia, hypocalcemia and magnesium depletion. These are the complications occurring with loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics. The interactions of thiazide and loop diuretics. They potentiate all the antihypertensives, they enhance digitalis toxicity, they increase the risk of ventricular tachycardia, reduces sulfonylurease action, they also cause autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. With cotrimoxazole uh, with diuretics, cotrimoxazole with diuretics causes high incidence of thrombocytopenia, which is not a very good uh, situation. Indomethacine and other NSAIDs diminishes the action of loop diuretics. And lastly, probenicid, which is a drug used in prevention of gout, competitively inhibits tubular secretion of erosamide and thiazides. The last category of drug is carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. It is categorized in the last category as weak diuretics. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are the drugs which inhibits the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. Here in the lumen, this carbonic anhydrase inhibitors inhibits the conversion of bicarbonate, bicarbonic acid into sodium and uh, into water and carbon dioxide. And here in the luminal cell, carbonic anhydrase inhibits the conversion of water and carbon dioxide into H2CO3. Because here the H2CO3 is not formed, hence this NaHCO3 reabsorption will not be occurring. Hence the sodium reabsorption is inhibited by carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Acetazolamide is the drug categorized under this uh, carbonic anhydrase. The dose is 250 mg once a day or twice a day depending upon the condition. It is well absorbed orally and excreted unchanged in the urine. Duration of action is 8 to 12 hours. Uses, they are used in glaucoma, in alkalizing urine, epilepsy, acute mountain sickness and periodic paralysis. These are the adverse drug reactions. The most common are hypokalemia and acidosis and these drugs are contraindicated in patients suffering from liver conditions and COPD. Last is the di osmotic diuretics. Mannitol is the, is the drug, of uh, drug of choice in this uh, category. Also isosorbide and glycerol are the drugs. These osmotic diuretics directly act by the system of or the mechanism of osmosis. Hence these are the three categories of drugs which are categorized under di uh, diuretics and these diuretics are all these diuretics are used in edema and hypertension specifically
that's all thank you